Have you ever wondered how you can stop lying to yourself and face your problems head on? That's what we'll talk about today. If you don't tell the truth about yourself, you cannot tell it about other people. Virginia Woolf. First of all, let's kick off this discussion by talking about the different kinds of lies that are out there. First of all, there's a one where you invent a story, make up something that is completely not true. My dad used to be the worst at this. He would try to explain why he was late or why he was drunk. And the lie he would tell was so preposterous that he really should have won an award for fiction. So with this kind of lie, you're making up a big story. And maybe you're telling yourself that your past and your history and this reason and that reason is exactly why you can't reach your goals. And the future is bleak. It's a downright fiction. The more you tell yourself this lie, the bigger flourishes you use to make it bigger and better and more impressive, the more likely this story is not even true. Then there's the blatant lie where you've just come right out and say the thing that is not true. Did you pick up groceries at the store? Yes. I hope you didn't do that. With the blatant lie, you're just flat out telling yourself something that's not true. Maybe you skipped exercising for the last week, but tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow I'll certainly exercise. I'm not going to do it today. I'm going to give myself one more day of rest, but tomorrow I'll totally exercise. And if you know you and you probably guess that this isn't going to be true, this goes into the category of being that blatant lie. Then there's the little lies, the white lies. They won't hurt anyone. They're fine. And sometimes they feel pretty good because we are sparing feelings of other people. And sometimes we're just making ourselves feel better. But they tend to be tiny. Does that shirt make you look fat? No. Do you like my new haircut? Oh, yeah. And sometimes it helps mend relationships. Then there's times when we break agreements or contracts or commitments to other people knowing that we're not going to do it. Will you do the laundry today? Sure, of course, I'll do it. Knowing that you probably won't do it at all. That white lie is so dangerous because all those little tiny lies add up to major disappointments with your goals. You might be telling yourself so you don't get upset. Oh, it's fine. I, I didn't really need to do that thing today. It's, it's, it's okay. I can, I can get to it later. Or I, I probably didn't even really need to do it. But every day, those little white lies, first of all, make it so that you can't even trust yourself anymore. And then secondly, they add up until you're no longer doing what you hope to do. You're never going out and reaching your goals. There's the brash lie, which is so unbelievable, no one would ever really believe that kind of thing. It's so insulting that anyone would think that that particular thing is true. The brash lie is so preposterous, and it's embarrassing that you even tell yourself this. And sometimes it's just bizarre. And when you tell yourself this brash lie, sometimes you do it because it's so ridiculous, you couldn't possibly believe it. But it's also sometimes meant to be boastful, pump you up, make you excited about something that you really shouldn't. If you tell yourself a story that's somewhat boastful, maybe meant to make you feel better about your goals, but maybe meant to disparage your goal and put it in a place where you tell yourself you don't actually need to get it done. That will kill your goal as bad as any of the lies that we tell ourselves in this list. There's the lie of omission. And that's the one I think is sometimes the most damaging of all, where it has a partial truth in it, but there's something we're leaving out. There's something we're not quite saying. The lie of omission is interesting because, again, we're telling ourselves only part of the truth. And you're telling yourself something very minor, but it's there to sort of cut your goals off at the legs. And so this slight omission is keeping you from problem solving. If you say, well, that budget didn't work at all. I have as much debt as I had two months ago. But is that lie of omission the fact that you didn't even really try. You didn't even follow the budget or you ended up knowing about a big purchase you were going to have to make, but you kept admitting it from the truth you're telling yourself. 
You can't fix your problems if you don't know what's going wrong and you don't have all the facts. By these lies of omission, you're making sure that you're never going to go anywhere with any of your goals. And the reason that lies are so destructive is because, first of all, it destroys any credibility with the people around us or it destroys credibility with ourselves, which is almost more damaging than anything. Because if we tell ourselves, I'm going to wake up tomorrow and I'm going to exercise, and you know pretty much you're not going to do it, then you start losing credibility with yourself and you realize it's pretty easy to lie to yourself. And so you start saying things that are blatantly untrue, knowing that what you just said is an outright lie. It makes people around us not trust us. And it makes us not trust ourselves. And that is something that will break every type of progress we hope to make in our lives. It causes resentment and anger, either in others or with ourselves, because I never get what I want. I never lose the weight. I never do what I wanted. I'm so frustrated. I'm so angry. And then you just feel hurt. You feel broken. You just don't even feel like you can go on with this particular task because you've just lied to yourself one too many times. It puts your life in a bad direction, causes you to fail in the direction you hope to get. It makes sure that you can never really do the thing that you're hoping to do. It also destroys your relationship with other people because they learn you're not trustworthy. I can't listen to you and you wouldn't tell me the truth even if you could. And I think the worst thing about lying to yourself in particular is that it causes us to not have a path forward. Because if you're not honest with yourself about what's going wrong, you can't create a plan to fix it. You can't take those small steps to make it better. Because you're lying to yourself about what's going wrong, there's really nothing you can do to make this better until you get that honesty. So sometimes it's hard to tell when you're lying to yourself or others are lying to you. And there's some pretty good ways of telling exactly when it is you are lying. A lot of times we can just see it in our face. If we were to go stand in a mirror and say the thing we just said, we could look ourselves in the eye and tell that's not really what's true here. If you say, look, I have tried to lose weight time and time again and it never works for me. And you tell yourself that in the mirror, you can almost see that you're avoiding the truth of the matter, that you intentionally, in a lot of ways, destroyed your diet. And that's why you're not losing weight not because it doesn't work. If you won't look others in the eye, that's a good sign too. Maybe you're sweating or nervous. Maybe you keep saying it over and over again. Well, I can't do this because I'm just not cut out for this. I'll never get what I want because I'm no good at it. And you keep saying it over and over to yourself. We used to have a phrase, who are you trying to convince, me or you? Meaning that you keep saying it so many times over and over again It's clearly something that you're trying to convince yourself of, and that's a good sign that you're telling yourself a lie. You can see it in your body. If you're looking downcast, if you're having nervous habits, if you're pausing or stuttering in what you're saying, maybe you have some nervous behaviors like you're tapping your foot or you're fidgeting. Those are often good signs that you're lying to yourself or lying to someone else. And then the other part is when you see a lot of pauses or stutters or trying to figure out what you're going to say, even to yourself, that's a good hint that what you may be saying is not truthful because you're trying to back it up. You're trying to come up with reasons and you're not being honest with yourself. So why do we do it? Why do we lie to others or to ourselves? And the reason is, is that sometimes we're just embarrassed We're embarrassed to say that the reasons we haven't gotten what we wanted to get, we haven't accomplished our goals because there's some force against us. So we lie about what is coming up to make it so that we can't get what we want or we'll never get what we want. Sometimes it's self-esteem. We just feel bad about ourselves. And the easiest way to get past it is to just lie about the situation so we feel a little bit better about what we're doing or how we feel. Maybe we lack confidence and it's an easier way to say, I can't get what I want because the world is against me instead of 
because I don't go after the things I want. I don't try. I don't think I'm going to get it. Sometimes it's easier to feel that we're fated to not get what we want than it is to look at the real reason what's going on, to look at the bare facts. Sometimes we lie to ourselves because we're trying to cover up our failures. We're trying to not make it look so bad, not make it look like we've tried this forever and ever and ever. And so the cover-up feels a little bit better than actually being truthful. Sometimes we tell ourselves a lie because we don't want to do the work. It looks too hard. It looks like it takes too long. I just don't want to get there. I think that was what I was doing when I lost weight the first time. I just told myself about all these reasons I couldn't get it and I didn't want to have it. And to be honest with you, just getting it was a lot easier than just lying to myself all the time. Not getting what you want has a tax on us. And if we can just start doing those things, life actually starts getting better for us. And we start improving in so many ways. If we're trying to avoid work by lying to ourselves, we're probably actually causing ourselves to get more work. Some people, they just love to make up stories. They like it. They don't want to tell the truth. They think it's funny. And unfortunately, once they get good at lying to other people, they get awesome at lying to themselves. Sometimes people lie because they don't want to get hurt. They don't want the honest truth of it, and it's going to be too hurtful to know exactly what is really going on. Or they don't want to hurt other people. You know, sometimes if someone is really getting in the way of the goals, they don't want to come to that place where they realize that this situation is untenable or this relationship is harmful, and so they don't want to do that. And then the last reason is cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance is when we believe two separate things that doesn't really connect with each other. I believe that if I follow this diet and exercise every day, I will lose weight. I believe that I can never lose weight. And so now we have this gap in two statements, both of which we believe is true. And so we start acting in a way that destroys what we're trying to do because we don't want to have that gap between two things we believe. So we start to align our beliefs into one belief. So now the question is, is what do we do? How do we fight these lies that we tell ourselves? And so first of all is to be honest. Just start giving an honest evaluation of what's going wrong, what worked right, what hasn't worked very right, Are there skills that you need to learn? And just be honest about this. You must get away from these lies. And the first step is having that honest reflection. Talk to some friends or family who will be honest with you and give you good feedback. Tell them, I want to start this hardware company, but I'm never able to get this done. What do you think is in my way? Or what do you think the best advice would be that you could give me to get what I want? A lot of times those friends and family around us have really good insight because they're able to look at you in that external lens, which gives them some good points of view about what's going on. Realize that everyone feels like you felt at some point. Orville and Wilbur Wright, I'm sure they felt horrible a lot of days. Abraham Lincoln probably felt awful after he lost those 35 elections. There are people who can feel pretty terrible, feel like they can't get what they want, feel like they should quit. That's everybody. Everybody feels that way. Look how you can make things into smaller steps. I went on a big 100-mile hike in England a few years ago with my friend, and I'll tell you that the truth of how we did it was every morning we just got dressed, and we just started taking those first steps, and we just kept going. We just kept walking. And was it hard? To walk 100 miles in that many days? Absolutely. But it was just a step at a time. And any time I felt I couldn't go on, I'm too tired, I just took the next step. So make sure that you realize that you can get there by creating these small steps, these small plans, and keep going. Once you start telling the truth and realizing that the only way for you to do anything is to tell the truth, it gets easier. The more you tell the truth, the easier you get about being honest with yourself and others. I lied to myself all the time about why I couldn't lose weight 
or why I couldn't get a job I like or why I couldn't have a pathway in my life that was making any sense. I'm never really afraid of hard work. The real answer was I didn't really know what I wanted. And as soon as I figured out what I wanted, I got it. But until I stopped lying to myself, I didn't even know what the problem was. And that honesty helped me to figure out what was going wrong and to fix it. Stop telling yourself excuses. Start patting yourself on the back whenever you see success, even if the success is you just being honest with yourself. Spend time thinking about this. Create a plan. Make sure that you accept feedback from other people. And you forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for the lost years, the lost weeks, the mistakes that you've made. Learn to accept and listen to other people and yourself. And when you catch yourself either lying to yourself, stop it. Maybe even yell in your brain, stop. Whatever you need to do to disrupt that line of thinking, do it immediately. But then also catch yourself telling the truth. If you've had an honest statement with yourself and you see that you did that and it worked or it helped you or you got some progress in your plan, make sure you congratulate yourself. Pat yourself on the back a little bit. But always catch yourself in those actions. And then if all else fails, the last thing is to get therapy. Sometimes getting a counselor, a life coach, a psychologist, a psychiatrist is maybe what you really need to do. It's easy to get stuck in life, and it's easy to think that something is majorly wrong with yourself. And if you're not getting progress, and if you're not getting there, maybe it's time to do therapy so that you can have someone else who basically is educated in getting people to go and to move into their actions or to get past some of their hurts and angers of the past that person might be able to help you get to where you want to go with some good thoughtful advice and some good planning steps. So my challenge to you is take the lies that you wrote down last week and categorize them. Do you have a go-to lie that is your favorite style of lying? Take a look at why you may be doing that. What do you think that it offers you to tell this kind of lie? It helps to go after the deep reasons why you're telling yourself the lie and see if you can't cut it off right there. If you're lying to yourself because you're trying to be kinder to yourself, maybe you just need to be kinder to yourself. If you're lying to yourself because you want to avoid all your goals, maybe you need to take a look at those lies and break them down into truths so that you have the real details. Or Maybe your goals aren't the right goals. Maybe by the fact that you keep lying to yourself about your goals means that maybe it's not the right goal for you right now. Now, take those lies that you've categorized and you found out the reasons for and counteract them with some real truth. What is the truth of the matter? What is the honest facts that you're not facing by telling yourself these lies? Alrighty one, thanks so much. I appreciate the fact you're out there. Please remember to leave a review because that helps other people find the podcast. Honestly, it's one of the hardest things to get and they really do so much. And what it'll do is it'll push the podcast up to the top so other people can find it. And please remember that you can tell friends that they can face the truth by using small steps.